Married people often ask me, you know, how they can avoid pornography. It's so not good for the marriage. And they're looking for zgula, you know, for different amulets and tr- spiritual tricks. And I say, listen, hmm. maybe these are all good things, but let me tell you the, the best method. If you can create an amazing marriage, you're looking hmm. forward to come home at night. She's looking forward to come home at night. You, you, you're not fighting the pornography. You have an amazing relationship. You could talk about your brokenness. You could talk about your disappointments. You could, you could listen to each other and not run away from each other. You know, uh, uh, I once heard from a marriage therapist. We did a workshop together here, Monsi. He said something so powerful. He said, this is how a conversation between a husband and a wife should take place when there are a lot of issues. We're not talking when there's no issues and who doesn't have issues. He said, instead of, you know, the, 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 the wife comes to the husband and says, you know, I really want to talk to you about, I need to talk to you now for an hour about personal stuff when I'm feeling, you know, and he's busy with work and, and he, <laughs> he's trying to get his validation. He's trying to make money. He's trying to be productive. He, he's being successful and, and she wants this conversation. So, so the therapist was saying, you know, if you could tell, if, if the husband can talk to the wife and tell his wife, I want to know, I want to tell you something. There's a part of me, there's a part of me that doesn't want to have this conversation with you. There's a part of me that wants to go straight back to my computer, or straight back to my books, or straight back to my phone, or straight back to my Netflix, whatever it is, or my books, or my gym. There's a part of me that doesn't want this conversation with you. It's scared. It wants to be isolated. It doesn't believe in emotional transparency. But, but I want the relationship with you. And, and the woman, the woman could, could say, you know, wow, and there's a part of me that right now wants to run away from you <laughs> and say, I'm done. You know, let me call my sister. <laughs> let me call my therapist. Let me go do my yoga. I'm done with you. There's a part of me. But I want this relationship. The challenge is when the parts start talking to each other, what, what Hasidus calls the klipois talk to each other, my shells are talking to your shells rather than my I, my, my liberated, expansive self is talking to yourself. When we can do this for each other, I don't need the pornography. So, so the marriage therapist's recommendation was to take the experience that the person was having of not wanting to be there, separated from themselves and say, this is not me, this is a part of me that wants to do that. It's a part but of I'm me. But I'm here. It's an important part of me. It's, it allowed me to survive for 39 years. <laughs> it's a big part of me. It comes up every day. But you know what? I want a relationship. I know I want to be a re- I, wa- I want a relationship. I don't want to live in active trauma. I don't want to have to freeze every time you confront me. I don't want to have to get into fight or flight. I want to be in a relationship. But, but there's a part of me that says, absolutely no, you don't want to be in a relationship. And you know what? If you need your wife, if you feel that you need your wife, you know what that's going to bring up? It's going to bring up the fact that one day you needed a mother. You needed a mother. You needed a father. You didn't have them. You know how painful that was? When you were four years old, you told yourself, I don't need a mother. I don't need a father because you didn't have one. I don't need anybody. I don't need anybody. You know what? I don't even need emotions. Emotions are a stupid burden. I'm going to become an Einstein. I'm going to become a genius. I'm going to make a lot of money. I'm going to become a Talmud Chacham. Whatever it is, I'm going to be respected in yeshiva. And I'll do well. I don't need a mother. I'm not a baby. I'm not a baby. If you need a wife, (laughs) that's coming up. I need a wife. I need somebody to hold me. I don't want to go there. So I say, I don't need anybody. But that, those are very real parts that made me or us survive. And now, yep. if we can have the courage to be able to identify them and say, wow, but you know what? I need a mother. I need a father. I need a wife. I need a husband. It's very There's vulnerable. Therapist. It's very vulnerable. It's vulnerable. It's scary, Huge. and and we need to be, we need to you know we need to work together in this because you know if if I share this with you and you tell <laughs> me what a sick man I am, I go right back into isolation. Right. There is a vulnerability, and there is an exposure that happens. There's a therapist. It has to be so much, so much humility, so much goodwill, and the most important word is compassion, empathy, and compassion for ourselves. And, and, and compassion for the other. I, I know a fellow, he sent me a whole email. I mean, but these are common stories. I've heard this from so many people. 
he has been sexually molested for many, many years. And he says the pain was so profound, he, he didn't know about this. <laughs> he didn't know about this for decades. The pain was so profound, disassociation. His words, my soul left my body. Because if my soul would be in my body, it would be too much. So my body became a shell of itself. And now you could do with my body whatever you want. You can molest it, you can rape it every night because I was not there. He said, and you know what? I never came back. I never came back. So I processed the world, not through embodiment, but through a brain. And he told me, he says, I am artificial intelligence. I am artificial intelligence. Has a great job in a company. He's a brilliant programmer. He's a brilliant guy. (laughs) I am artificial intelligence. He says, "I I have no emotions. There is the dissociative state is very is very common. When I was it's very profound. Now you're in a marriage, you're in a relationship, right? Infidelity, you can have sexuality, you can have fake love without emotions. <laughs> Respect. That's that's the state I was referring to earlier. That ability to be able to to leave your body in some some format. That's the it's brilliant. The strategy is yeah. The strategy I, is brilliant. Yeah. I go to porn, I go to a club, I'm cheating on my wife, right? It could be uh, sexting, what do they call it, uh, on WhatsApp, on on my phone, uh, physical, uh, virtual, whatever it is. This is a way of connecting without really connecting. (laughs) I don't have to share with with the prostitute or with my fake partner or with the porn scenes, my emotions. It's all on my terms. I'm living in a vicarious relationship that is completely inauthentic and my survival skill is protected. And I could look at myself and say, I'm a piece of garbage. I am the greatest disappointment to Judaism. And, and I think what we're trying to share tonight is the truth. And that is, yes, you want to be able to stop, but the only way you're gonna stop is if you're gonna have empathy. Empathy and compassion for what happened here. Because you're actually not an evil person. You're actually a very, very good person. And when you could recognize the need you'll be able to really be able to forgive what happened and actually really move on in a very integrated way. And this takes so much compassion. But we we always have to validate, as you said, the suffering. The person person who's pain. It's very, very important. Um, In fact, we got a few emails after last session. Some wife said, you know, it's so nice. So you give empathy to my husband, the (laughs) addict, right? (laughs) What about 25 years of my life that was destroyed? I was living with an addict. This is so important. Very, it's it's extremely important. And I'm gonna give a very big round of applause from my heart to all the spouses who have stuck through very, very difficult relationships. And uh, you're you're there for these people believing in their souls. And, And hopefully, you know, all of us will be coming around more and more, but these spouses are, are righteous. Righteous things. I also also want to say, on the other hand, not on the other hand, together with this is that you know each of us, husbands and wives, you know, even if I'm married to an addict, which may be very serious, and I deserve all the validation, it doesn't mean I don't have trauma. <laughs> uh, you know, I may also have some deep, deep stuff that I have to work through, and and you know, just to say you're this sick person, you know, and I'm I'm perfect, it sometimes keeps us stuck as well. 